Hello everyone, welcome to another video by Sinta. I am Rasti and today we will be looking at problem number 23 from IOQM 2024. So let's get into it. Given the 14 numbers, 1 to the 4, 2 to the 4, all the way to 14 to the 4, you want to find the smallest natural number n such that they leave distinct remainders when divided by n. What you really want is that 1 to the 4 2 to the 4, 14 to the 4, are distinct modulo n. That's what you want. Now, here are a few heuristic arguments. Number 1. n has to be greater than or equal to 28. This is forced almost immediately because if you see what happens when you take a value of n less than 28, you'll notice that some two of these, uh, you know, values from so 1, 2, all the way up to 40 might be negatives of each other. So if what I'm saying is if x congruent to minus y mod n, that would imply x square congruent to y square mod n. And hence it would imply x to the 4 congruent to y to the 4 mod n. We want this to not happen, right? For x, y between 1 and 40, even if they are distinct not equal to it. Right? We don't want this to happen. This is bad. So we don't want this to happen. But this is guaranteed to happen. Guaranteed happen for n less than 20. Why? Take n equal to 27, for example. The largest possibility for n less than 20. Which two are negatives of each other? 14 and 30. 14 is common to minus 30 mod 27. So it's clear that their force powers are going to be equal to each other. Mod 27. Right? So we don't want any negatives in between these set, uh, in between the set. So that force is n greater than equal to 20. You can even take a smaller example here, n equal to 3. This is even quicker, right? 4 is, I mean, this is even more easy. 4 is common to 1. But you get the general idea that, e I mean, this is really bad. If x is common to y, uh, mod, and x to the 4 is obviously going to be common to y, uh, to the common to y to the 4 mod n. So you definitely don't want x, x common to y mod n. This you definitely don't want. So this immediately disqualifies anything less than 15, right? For rather 40. I'm saying even this is forced because if x is going to minus y mod n, the 4 powers are going to end up being. This is the first argument. After this, what I'm going to say might be, it's slightly non-rigorous, but it's a good problem-solving heuristic, especially for a test like IOQM, which is objective in nature, so it really saves you time. But even in a, a test that involves proofs, it's good to have an idea like this. Word, modulo, science. Why? Because of stuff like this. That if P divides x to the 4 minus y to the 4, I want to break this, given that x to the 4 minus y to the 4 is a very nice factorization, and I want to look at each of those cases separately, saying is that this implies that P divides x square minus y square times x square plus y square. Because of the fact that P is a prime, this implies that P divides either x square minus y square or P divides x square plus y square. It can divide both. Two. That's totally fine. But I'm definitely guaranteed one of these two. Right? This you cannot do for a composite body line. For that, you have you have to be guaranteed that one of the divisors is co prime to whatever model you chose. This kind of a jump only works for primes. So let me just see what I can make do with primes, right? So if I want to avoid x to the 4 common to y to the 4 mod p, I definitely want to avoid both of the possibilities. So I want to avoid this implies avoid x square congruent to minus y square mod p and avoid, we want to avoid both of these, x square congruent to y square. It'll take a look at this in a bit, but this again, what, is, what does this mean? E divides x square minus first. We want to avoid this. 
But P divides x square minus y square implies P divides x minus y times x plus y, which in turn implies, because of the fact that P is a prime, that P divides either x minus y or x plus y. I, this is the same thing as, so, this is an equal value. If you can avoid both x square power to minus y square mod p, and you can avoid x square power to y square mod p, then you can avoid x to the 4 common to y to the 4 mod. Because of the fact that if p divides x to the 4 minus y to the 4, it will have to divide at least one of them. Because you can avoid both, that means you can avoid the higher power as well. Similarly, to avoid x square power to y square mod p, if you can avoid x power to y mod p, and if you can avoid x common to minus y mod p, you're set, right? But we've already taken care of this by considering n congruent to uh, n greater than or equal to 28. So in our case, we want we want p congruent to 28. So we want primes greater than or equal to 28, such as 29, 31, 37, I think, and so on. Right? So this is already taken care of. So I don't have to think too much about this simply by considering P greater than equal to 20. Now look into this. This is a more sinister condition. We want to avoid P divided X squared plus Y squared. Now for those of you fortunate enough, this only happens if P is congruent to, this not only, it happens if and only if P is congruent to one mod 4. This is a slightly hard result in number theory. It's one of those things that you are used to know it. It's pretty easy to spot, and if you don't, it's kind of impossible to figure out in the moment. But this is true. Uh, one direction follows pretty easily by just uh, making a, an order argument. The other side is harder. Uh, it has to do with primitive roots, modular primes, and such. But regardless, this is a true statement. And so if I can just force P over to 3 mod 4, I'm guaranteed that P will never divide X plus the size squared, no matter what X and Y are. So, I get two conditions on P to make sure that X to the 4 corner to Y to the 4 mod P cannot happen between the numbers 1 to 14. Right? Those conditions are P greater than or equal to 28, P corner to 3 mod 4. The smallest prime which does this job is P equals 31. Right? It would be a sensible claim or at least a guess, that this is the smallest number that works at all. Because this, because P divides X squared plus Y squared is kind of like a hard condition to have, like to not have rather. So P doesn't divide X squared plus Y squared. It's kind of hard to have this, as we'll see. So to make the claim that P is equal, that N is equal to 31 is in fact the smallest natural number such that all of these are distinct modulo N, we'd have to prove three statements that n is equal to 28, n is equal to 29, n is, and n is equal to 30, all shared. We already know that n less than 28 will fail because of the arguments we made initially. Right? If you remember the argument here, so n less than 28 fails. We just have to check that n is equal to 28, 29, and 30 also fail. Now, since we're looking for counter examples, now, instead of trying to avoid this, so let's do for n, equal, n is equal to 20 each first. We want to make sure that this happens. Now, by Chinese remainder theorem, this is the same as making sure that both of these happen. This is a pretty easy condition to read off. If you remember that squares modulo 4, either 0 or 1, you'll see that this in place, this is equivalent rather, that x and y, have the same parity. If X and Y have the same parity, then this is true. Now comes this. Can I find two X and Y between 1 and 14 of the same parity such that their fourth powers are equivalent mod 7? This is either a matter of knowing how to deal with primitive roots, in particular knowing that 2 is a primitive root mod 7 and then just seeing the powers of 2 modulo 7 and seeing what what the condition becomes, or just a little bit of lucky guesswork. So in this case, 8 and 6 do the job. In particular, 7 divides 8 squared minus 6 squared, which is nothing but 28, so it's pretty easy. So 8 squared is congruent to 
6 square modulo 28 and hence 8 to the 4 is covered to 6 to the 4 modulo 7. And so, and it's pretty clear that 8 to the 4 is also covered to 6 to the 4 modulo 4. So again, by Chinese remainder theorem, it's guaranteed that 8 to the 4 is common to 6 to the 4. These two combined give me that this is the case. If you want, you can dip out a calculator, calculate these, and actually check that 20 divides this difference, but you won't have to work that hard. For 29, the work is a bit more in that you are guaranteed to have to use derivative rules to prove that there's that there's x and y between 1 and 14 that satisfy this. I will not go into the details of that, but if you really wanted to, you would have to first notice that 2 is a primitive root modulo 29. The case is roughly the same as 7. And then you would have to look at 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, and so on for a bit. Uh, uh, modulo 29. And you'd see that 8 and 9 do the job. And in particular, in that 8 square plus 9 square is divisible by 29. It's not very hard to check this. So what we get is that 8 square is common to minus 9 square modulo 29, which implies that 8 to the 4 is common to 9 to the 4 modulo 29. This is albeit a hard argument. Similarly, for modulo 30, that isn't a lot of work. You just want to split mod 6 and mod 5 by Chinese remainder theorem and solve these congruences independently to get the conditions on X and Y. With some effort, 8 and 6 can again be shown to work. And, and so 31 is indeed the smallest moduli, modulus, such that smallest modulus, such that 1 to the 4, 2 to the 4, 14 to the 4, are distinct odd and that's it. This is a hard problem, much more much harder to prove, slightly easier to guess. But I hope you took away something from this video, especially this this argument. This is a pretty subtle argument. And I would encourage all the viewers to check out why this works. There's lots of great resources on the internet. Maybe a future video as well. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.